What's up guys, CB Mod here back with another video and today we're here with a rather familiar system. In fact, if you watched a video just a couple days ago, you may notice these parts were featured in that particular build and this is December's Office PC build or as well at this point, it's not fully built completely yet. There's a couple parts in the system, but we'll definitely have to get there. So for those of you who did miss last video, basically we're going to be going over a budget offered system that will get you through most office tasks, offering snappy responsiveness, decent performance, and overall a good package for the low price it does come in at. Now the time of recording, I do want to point out that AMD Zen based APUs aren't exactly on the market yet. Sure, they've been announced and there's a few out there, but as for a lot of different options out there on the AMD Zen side, in terms of an APU, they're just not there yet. So for those of you who are going to be pointing out that I should have gone with an AMD system for a good budget system, that is definitely valid. However, I did do the calculations and for an Intel CPU and motherboard was less than getting an AMD uh, Ryzen CPU plus a motherboard plus a video card because there isn't a video uh, system on the Zen family yet. However, if this video was done in a few months time or whenever they do happen to actually come to stock, uh, definitely we would switch out this combination for an AMD based system. But nevertheless, let's actually take a look at those parts that we will be putting together for this particular office system. Now CPU wise, we did mention that we're not going with AMD, so we stuck with the Intel Core i3 7100. It's definitely a solid CPU with decent enough graphics for watching web videos and content, and if you really did want to push, you could probably play some mid-end games at low kind of settings, and sure, if you dropped it back to low resolutions, totally playable as well. Now again, yes, we could have gotten better performance by just throwing in a video card, but again, this is not a gaming system and probably will never load a game that's more intense than playing 2048 on a Chrome browser. So in terms of actual raw processing power and FPS this thing needs is really next to nothing. So we went with that. Intel Core i3, definitely on the CPU front, a nice little chip right there, and because it is last gen and is not an 8th gen uh, CPU, we did save about $70 over the new offering, so I was actually really happy we got this chip and the board, the chip saved us about $70, about $20 off the board, so it wasn't half that bad there. Now again, no GPU, so on to the motherboard. And in terms of the motherboard, we grabbed ourselves the ASUS B250 Prime M-K, or M-K Prime. This motherboard is definitely solid, whilst it doesn't have a ton of features that we could really talk about, it gets the job done and I really don't mind the aesthetic. It's a budget board, but honestly, it's really not too bad in the looks department. And I don't know how much we can see in this particular shot, but there's no window on the case, so honestly, looks really don't matter. We get two RAM slots, which is plenty for today's build, and of course a PCI Express 16x slot, so down the line, if we did want to throw a video card in, the CPU is more than capable of handing a mid-range GPU, and with that 16x connection, we'll definitely be able Able to do so. Moving on to RAM, boy this thing was hard to find RAM for. Back when I first moved to X99 and DDR4 was like a month old and I was stupid enough to buy 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM when it was absolutely brand new, I ordered my 32 gig kit and it came in at $112 per 8 gig dim and I got myself 4 8 gig dims. In this particular build we grabbed ourselves a single stick of 8 gigabytes of RAM and that came in at $120, yeah that is absolutely absolutely crazy. Even though we're well into the life cycle of DDR4, it's actually more expensive at the time of recording than it was when I first bought it at launch. So. DRAM shortages are definitely a major problem here in Australia. Honestly, if we built this system about 6 months ago, or most likely 6 months into the future, 16 gigs of RAM would easily have been had for $120, but as it is today, here in December of 2017, with DRAM shortages up there, we're really slogging it hard with only 8 gigs of RAM for $120. Unfortunately, not much we could really do with it, even if we went DDR3, that's still pretty expensive as it is at the moment, so we stuck with this kit from Crucial, which will definitely get the job done. Now moving on to storage, this is where things got a little bit changed up from the original plan. Now the original plan was a 256 gig SSD plus a one terabyte hard drive, but I did change it up ever so slightly. So I stuck with the Intel 256 gigabyte SSD 
SSD right here from the 545 series, which is definitely okay, not NVMe fast, but this guy compared to a regular hard drive, going to be miles ahead of him. And in terms of hard drive, because we just had Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales, I managed to snag a 500 gigabyte Seagate drive for just $20. Not a bad deal right here. Whacked it in, sure it's not going to be a terabyte, but let's face it, an office system having Microsoft Word installed, and that's kind of it, we could probably have actually gotten away with just a 256 gigabyte SSD, but storage is storage, so I threw in an extra 500 gigs for that. Sure, we could have probably gone with a terabyte and that would have been within budget, but overall, we saved a couple bucks here, so there we go. I also do threw in a CD DVD drive, which is sitting in this case right now. It's an LG little unit, nothing too special. It will read our CDs, read our DVDs, get the job done, nothing really too much here. I mean, CD drives haven't changed in like 20 million years, so they're pretty much there. And of course, we got ourselves the deep cool frame case. Now, we'll touch on this case a little bit after I actually build in it, uh, because after taking it out of the box, there's a couple of things that I do want to... Um actually have a talk about with this particular case. Couple quirks here and there, but overall that is about it. Oh, actually no. Power supply wise, we did stick with the Corsair VS uh 350 power supply. Again, it's not exactly the world's highest end power supply and it's probably one of the most uh, budget offerings out of Corsair, but it is from a reputable manufacturer. It's not one of those weird beige things that you find in pre-builds and it's not going to blow up anytime soon. So sure, it's not the world's highest end power supply, but it's definitely going to get this thing up and running. So with that being said, those are the parts. That's the case. Let's go ahead and build it. So that was the build the system is together and when I was building it I did have a few snags with the particular case and a couple things here that just made me go what the hell now it's been quite some time since I've done a super budget build like this guy with the total cost of the actual parts coming in around the 600 ish dollar price point which does sound like quite a lot uh, but here in Australia a 600 dollar build is more like your kind of 350 400 dollar price range if you are over in the states so uh, in terms of actual budget cases, this thing is really, really basic. And there's a couple of things that just made me go, what the hell are budget cases even doing? Now, first off with this red thing, I don't know what it is or what it does. It looks like it goes with the five and a quarter inch adapter. It looks like it's some sort of um, floppy drive adap adapter kind of thing. Like if you have a um, three and a quarter inch, whatever size the actual floppy things are. I don't know what it is and I can't find a piece of paper with this thing specified on it. So if someone out there knows what it does and what it is with the deep cool frame, uh, please do let me know. I think it's for the CD drive, but it seems a little bit too big to actually fit in there. When I had the front panel actually off, uh, there was nowhere to mount it, so these what look to be screw holes may not be for screws. I don't know what it is, but um, doesn't seem too important, so we'll just uh, leave that out for now. The piece I express around the back was also too bit of a what the hell moment. There was not a single screw in the included screw bundle thing that would actually fit into the little holes drilled on the piece I express bracket. Uh, for some reason, either they forgot to include it or they just don't expect you to put a video card inside a case like this because there was not a single screw in there that would fit. I actually tried every single screw multiple times. I don't think I put it in the time lapse, but I was sitting there for like a good 20 minutes just trying every single screw screw over and over, but not a single one fitted. Now, whether it's just the fact that you actually have to really jam those screws in there, but I'm not exactly sure. In the end, I probably would have just resorted to going over to my big screw pile that not everyone does have and just grabbing a screw that would have fitted. Um, but as a new builder, building in a case like this, you would really have a lot of problems with getting those PCI Express brackets actually installed. Now, I don't know if it's just a variant of this case, like a quality control issue or something like that, but I found on my particular unit, I could not get a single screw in that PCI Express bracket. And I was just going, what the hell is even going on? The cover that actually came with it, I couldn't even put the cover on because 
it just wouldn't fit, so that was a bit of a downside. Another downside too was just the tolerances in general when it came to the screw holes. A couple of the standoffs inside this case were impossible to put in with your fingers and I actually had to resort to using some pliers because I lost my little uh, standoff adapter. I don't know where it's gone. It's in a toolbox around here somewhere. And then I discovered that the iFixer toolkit actually offered a uh, standoff adapter. So I kind of felt a little bit stupid after I screwed in all the uh, standoffs with some pliers and then realized my iFixer toolkit had one in there all along. So if you are gonna be building in this case, do keep in mind that general, in general, all the standoffs and all the screw holes, anything that has a screw put into it in this particular case, has some really terrible tolerances on it. The panels fit up perfectly fine, the plastic meets the metal okay, but when it comes to screw holes in this case, it is absolutely garbage, I do have to say, but it does get the job done, so overall, I can't exactly to be, well, actually that upset. Overall, the build did go off other than the screw issues pretty much uh, without any problems. Uh, lining all the components were just fine. Plopping the motherboard was okay in, though with that being said, the Prime B250M-K motherboard has one of the world's worst uh, rear I.O. panels I've ever used. It's just the little standoff screwy stabby things that I've completely forgotten what they're called. They're basically little earthing points for the motherboard uh, were not lined up properly and I kept jabbing myself on them. So just something to keep in mind. But again, overall the actual build didn't go too bad. Now this particular case doesn't exactly support really any cable management behind the motherboard tray. There's literally no room. So the cable management in this case is god awful, but it does the job and will be okay for this system. If I was throwing in a video card, yeah, I'll be a little bit more concerned about those cable managements, but overall, as we can see in this shot, it isn't exactly too half that bad. Sure, personally, I wouldn't mind it to be better, but as you probably saw in the last shot, and also to, well, having a look here, there's no window on this guy, so really, as much as it does bug me personally, there's no one really going to be looking inside the actual system, so cable management, whilst it's okay and will definitely let air flow, it won't be too much of an issue. And then one final thing I did want to point out before we do jump into some benchmarks and testing uh, is fans for this system. The case doesn't come with any fans, and I didn't opt to actually put any in other than what was already on the components, mainly because the Core i3 will kick out such little heat that it's not really that much of an issue. There's also to no GPU, so there won't be any more heat there, and the power supply is set to exhaust out any hot air, so it'll just be taking in some air and blowing it out. Now, in terms of actual case temps, I'm expecting this guy to be about 15 to 20 degrees Celsius above ambient in terms of the air temperature inside this guy, and it might run a little bit warmer than if we had have actually added some intake and exhaust fans, but this particular system is going to be living on the floor, and the fact of the matter is, without any case fans, it won't be vacuuming up as much dust. I've got a system pretty similar to this case with no exhaust and no intake fans, basically just the CPU and power supply fans going, uh, and I've got that downstairs on the floor unfortunately as well, and that's been running for about two years, and I opened up about six months ago back in June, and it was basically spotless in there. There's a couple bits of dust here and there, but overall it looked like it had just been cleaned. And seeing that I'm the owner and basically neglect that system, it has not been cleaned at all. So I have to say, without any intake and exhaust fans, definitely gonna run warmer, definitely probably not the best situation, but in terms of keeping dust out of the case, it's not gonna be too bad. Sure, there's definitely gonna be a negative air pressure thanks to the fact that that uh, fan in the back is gonna be exhausting air out, but it's not gonna be sucking dust in as fast as if we had have added fans. Definitely though, probably fans is a definitely good idea, but it will be perfectly fine for for what it is. So with that being said now, let's go ahead and take a look at some benchmarks and numbers for this particular little system. So there are our numbers. Now you may notice we literally didn't do any gaming testing on this guy because let's face it, the game results are gonna be pretty disappointing. But overall, not really too much there. The emphasis definitely was on speed, whether it be crystal disc mark, general boot tests, or anything like that. We did find numbers on this guy were extremely snappy and responsive. Now numbers don't exactly sort of convey the actual speed of this system. So here are a couple shots of things like boot up times, opening up applications, and that kind of stuff where you can just see how snappy it is. And 
in video it looks snappy, but definitely when you use it, it feels so much more responsive. Now, the owner of this computer is coming from a seven or eight year old computer at this point. I kind of lost track on how old it is, but it's about seven or eight years old with a first generation Intel Core i3. So this, while still is a Core i3, is going to be a massive jump up from what they are using. And with an SSD, this thing's going to be blazing fast for that particular owner. Overall, in terms of day-to-day -day tasks like browsing Word documents, or rather browsing the internet and using Word documents, opening up emails and just doing things that 90% of people do on the computers without actually going into the gaming category, this thing is going to blow it away. Sure, if you are a gamer, a system like this is definitely not on the cards for you, but for a lot of people out there, for whether they'll be computers for their parents, siblings, brothers, sisters, whatever the case may be, this kind of a system is actually not that bad. And honestly, if I wasn't making videos and wasn't really into gaming that much, I'd probably have a system fairly similar to this. Decent on the price point, coming in around 600 or sort of five or 400 US dollars and it does a really good job when it comes to the performance department. Nevertheless, guys, though, with that being said, find the links down in that description box if you do want to build a system similar to this. I've got all the parts specced out down there. Also, do let me know down in the comments sections if you have any questions about a particular system like this. If you're planning to build one, why not let me know down in that comment sections. Otherwise, guys, thanks all for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one.